Queensland Raceway is the next stop on the V8 Supercars calendar. The circuit was built back in 1999 with the assistance of the great man Dick Johnson. And they produced a paper clip. Four right-handers, two lefties and three genuine passing opportunities. It could be worse. It would indeed be hard to do worse. Really. Let's just start again. Flatten the place, get the bulldozers in, actually dig some undulation into the place. The only good thing about it is that from the spectator banks you can see all the action. But that's it. I like Queensland Raceway. I think it's a track that uh, it has probably about six places uh, that you could potentially pass uh, another guy. Um, We've been there a fair little bit in Touring Car Masters and really enjoy it. Um, you know, it's, it's an unusual little track, you might say. Some guys don't like it, but I, I like Queensland Raceway. Paperclip? I don't know, I would have put Oran Park there. What a great track. It's got a crossover, a lot of character. I'm a fan of the track, and to be honest, it's probably because I like that whole precinct with the go-kart track, and obviously me being a bit of a drag racing boy, Willowbank Raceway being right next door. It's one of those tracks that isn't the most enjoyable place to drive around, but we've had some pretty good pace there over the years, and I'm actually looking forward to getting there to see what the cars can do this year. But when I think about that Ipswich track, one thing comes to mind. Pouring down rain, Paul Radisic <laughs> in the sand at turn one, and the biggest streak you've ever seen, butt crack hanging out, trying to help him dig out of that sand. Hilarious. Nissan Motorsport had a super competitive round at Queensland Raceway last year. On the second race on Saturday, Caruso put it on the front row, and with Wing Cup fast approaching from the rear, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Scott McLaughlin for the win. And Caruso, please tell us the end result. I had a crack. Why wouldn't I? I was running second, and my car was good enough to win. Scotty accepted my apology, but it was definitely a missed opportunity. The following day, Moff put Nissan back in the spotlight, taking his first ever career pole. It was also the first time a Moffat had been on pole position for an Australian Touring Car Championship round in 30 years since 1984. As pole position man yesterday, Alan Moffat. Moff led in the early stages of the race, but a slower middle stint put him back a couple of spots. But that didn't stop him having a go. Like Caruso, I wanted a podium real bad. And on the last lap, I tried to break as late as possible and pass Chas Mostert around the outside. It didn't work and I ended up in the boonies. Like I was ever going to settle for fourth though. On paper, there's not much to the track. And given its simplicity, you'd think finding a fast, consistent setup wouldn't be too hard. If you get it right, you'll be fighting for a podium. But if you get it wrong, you're in for a long, long weekend.